tearful press conference, Tafari Campbell's mother, Mrs. Loretta Campbell, addressed the media. It's with a heavy heart that I stand before you all today. My son Tafari was not just a chef, he was a loving father, a caring husband, and my pride and joy. The pain of losing him is unbearable, and the quest for truth has been agonizing. Based on the evidence I've seen and the testimonies I've heard, I believe that the Obamas, who my son served loyally for years, have a role in his tragic demise. I never imagined I'd have to question the integrity of a family he held in such high regard. I demand justice for Tafari and urge the authorities to conduct a thorough investigation. No mother should ever have to bury her child, especially under such mysterious circumstances. All I seek is the truth, and I hope it comes to light soon. Disturbing details are coming out about the suspicious death of Barack Obama's personal chef, Tafari Campbell. Reports recently appeared that Tafari was writing a tell-all book before he drowned last month. Tafari drowned while paddleboarding near the Obama family's home on Martha's Vineyard. While the police have labeled Tafari's death as an accident, reports emerged on social media that Tafari was writing a bombshell book before he died, leading many to wonder if someone wanted to silence him. Also, just weeks before Tafari died, Obama's old letters resurfaced in which he admitted to fantasizing about sleeping with men. Many are now wondering if Tafari knew Obama's other secrets. So, what really happened to Tafari Campbell? Why are so many people saying his death was not an accident? Let's break it down. We're seeing images of the Obama family chef who died on Martha's Vineyard. His body was found near a pond near the Obama home after a paddleboarding trip. Tafari Campbell, a 45-year-old father of two and former White House chef for Barack and Michelle Obama, had been identified as the man found dead on July 23rd in Edgartown Great Pond near the Obama's Martha's Vineyard property. According to the Daily Mail, Tafari was paddleboarding with an unidentified woman who also works for Obama when he fell off his paddleboard and tried to swim to shore. The woman, who was on a separate paddleboard, reportedly tried to reach Campbell after he fell off. However, she couldn't get to him, so she returned to shore to get help. Sources told the Daily Mail that it was a Secret Service agent who called 911 from the Obama estate in Edgartown to report the incident. According to the Mail, authorities initially didn't want to release any details of the incident, and they were withholding the names of everyone involved. The initial call came in at 7.46 p.m., when police and the fire department responded to the report that a man had fallen off his paddleboard and went underwater. However, according to the Mail, Martha's Vineyard Police left the reason for the emergency call blank in official logs from the day of the incident. Divers reportedly continued searching for Tafari into the night, and they finally located his body around 10 a.m. the next morning by using sonar. Several eyewitnesses said the Obamas were not at the scene when Tafari's body was recovered. However, they noticed several Secret Service agents. The authorities later determined that Tafari's drowning was an accident, and the police claimed there were no signs of foul play. However, many on social media are saying something's not adding up about the official account of Tafari's death. The lack of public information has sparked numerous viral theories, including those that claim Tafari was eliminated because he was writing a tell-all book on Obama. Just weeks after Tafari drowned, Obama's old letters from the 80s resurfaced on the internet in which he admitted to fantasizing about sleeping with men daily. The letter resurfaced after Obama biographer David Garrow talked to Tablet Magazine about his biography of Obama, Rising Star, The Making of Barack Obama. Garrow revealed that he interviewed over a thousand people for his book, including Obama's ex-girlfriends Sheila Mayoshi Jagger and Alex McNair. They both showed him some private letters they received from Obama. Garrow revealed that one of the letters he obtained from Alex had a paragraph that was retracted. When Garrow asked Alex why she didn't want to show that part, she said it's about homosexuality. However, Garrow discovered that copies of the letters could be found at the Emory University archives. Emory didn't let Garrow take pictures of the letters. So Garrow sent a friend to transcribe by hand the most important parts, including the paragraph about homosexuality mentioned by Alex McNair. Obama was 21 when he sent this letter to Alex, and here's what he wrote about his gay fantasies. In regard to homosexuality, I must say that I believe this is an attempt to remove oneself from the present. I make love to men daily, but in the imagination. My mind is androgynous to a great extent. I choose to accept that I am a man physically in life. It didn't take long before the letter went viral on social media. Many pointed out that the late Joan Rivers publicly stated that Obama was gay just weeks before she died. On June 30th, 2014, Joan was seen arriving at an NYC bookstore, where she was set to officiate a gay wedding. When paparazzi asked her if America would ever elect a gay president, Joan said it already happened with Obama. Joan also claimed that Obama's wife, Michelle, is transgender. Weeks after Joan made these comments, she died suddenly during a routine throat procedure. The authorities later launched an investigation which produced multiple contradictory reports about her death. Returning to Obama's late chef, Tafari Campbell, many on social media are drawing parallels between him and Joan. Unconfirmed reports claim that Tafari was writing a tell-all book which would have possibly exposed more private details about the Obamas.